So this is an absolutely horrible design to 3D print. I mean, just look at it. You have this support that needs to be pulled off. Once that support is removed, the underside is all rough and nasty. Since there's that steep curve, the merging of the layer lines is not very good. Since it is a circle, again, the steps of the layer lines become steeper and steeper, really highlighting them and making them look like a low quality product. And then ultimately, when you're actually using this, if you're using it for something that's actually structural, that handle is not very secure because there's not enough material in the plane of the layer lines to actually hold it together. So why would you possibly ever design something like this? Well, it's not that uncommon. I mean, the design for this handle was invented back in the Stone Ages, but it was invented in order to let clay be molded and rolled and then curved to make these handles on the side of stone pots. It was the way our ancestors did it. So today we still do it. But if we're now using a different technology, shouldn't we now design for that technology? So in this video, we're gonna run through how to actually design good handles for things like containers, cups, electrical enclosures, or anywhere else that you might actually need a handle so that we can move away from what is Stone Age and instead move into what is now Space Age. Now, this is actually a prime example of how design continues to exist, even though it's not really relevant anymore. If you look at this handle, it is left over from a bygone era. And even though it is reliable and consistent and there's not really any problem with it in the day-to-day -day life, we continue to use it because there's no real bump in the road that we notice while we're doing this. However, an engineer should notice it because as I mentioned at the beginning, this handle is very clearly bad. It is supported, which adds extra extra processing and mass production. It has a point of failure where the support interfaces. The layer lines are very poorly displayed. None of it is really good for mass production with 3D printing. So what are some handles that we can actually do? Well, one of the simplest ones that is still kind of stone age, but very reliable is basically a ladle handle. And this small handle is very simple to produce and very reliable. It's not really that great if you're making something like a coffee mug, but it does allow you to create a small cup or some kind of grabbing feature that is easy to produce. The one thing with this ladle is that you cannot print the cup on the print bed like this because you would need support underneath it. So instead you print the cup upside down. So there is some limit to where it can be used because the cup might have such a large overhang that there is sagging on the inside. But it's still a very reliable type of handle and a very simple one that's very easy to manufacture with 3D printing or really any other type of process that you feel like. So the, the ladle handle is decent, but still old and not really optimized. So let's go one step further. If you're working with 3D printing, you try to eliminate horizontal overhangs, these horizontal surfaces that stick out in thin air. You don't want those around. Instead, you go ahead and try to eliminate those overhangs by adding chamfers. And in this case, that's exactly what we've done. We've created this fin on the side of the cup. And this allows the cup to be printed in either orientation, upside down or vertical, however best the cup is made. But that leaves that decision for some other feature rather than being driven by the handle. But this fin is a good, reliable feature Feature. It is a very much similar to this. You cannot hook your finger through it, but you still have a good grip on it. And you can add these small pads so that you get really good grip on it. This is all very simple to do with 3D printing, though actually those indents could make something like this being molded quite difficult and more expensive. But in fact, in this way, there is never any island, there is never any through hole where a nozzle has to move from here to there and successfully finish that circle. It is a continuous tool motion all the way around, which is much more efficient and much more reliable. Again, in mass production, you're trying to eliminate the opportunity for things to go wrong. So creating a handle like this, where the tool head never has to pick up and move to a new place is better than a handle like this, where it's printing individual islands and creating dangerous type of parts that have a high opportunity for failure. This handle is as strong as the rest of the cup. If I cannot tear this in half like this, the handle will not tear in half. Whereas this individual section of a traditional handle could snap away if you were using this in a high strength application. If this was to be for a large production part or tooling jig rather than a small coffee mug, that handle would be fairly weak. Whereas this handle is exceptionally strong. But that handle might not have enough grip for you. So you might wanna add 
extra larger features on there to really get a hold of it. Again, if you're manhandling a large part like this. So what you might do is just add a knob onto it or some other thick feature, again, following chamfers, but giving yourself much more to get a hold of so that now instead of holding this with a pinch, I can actually almost hold it with a fist. Regardless of how large this part is, I have really good purchase on it. And this ball gives you really good grip, many different orientations from where you can grab it. So I can grab it from above or from the side or underneath, which are all great advantages. It also gives you good fine control throughout because now you can twist and pull and push. So this handle is very useful. And again, that thick feature would be impossible to manufacture any other way because if it was made with plastics with any other process, it would either create an enormous amount of waste or would not be manufacturable because that thick material would cause shrinkage to forming that ball. But with mass production 3D printing, that ball again is very simple. Making sure to keep the chamfer underneath it, of course, keeps this handle equally as strong as anything else you would ever possibly have and it creates a nice aesthetic that can be used to create a product that's truly unique because no other manufacturing or old process could actually produce this sort of aesthetic look and function. But that's only one step of the way there. There's many other options that are available. One that is simple, not really optimal in many cases, but easy if you're wanting a very wide handle is to use a horizontal flange or ring. This gives you grip of the part. You could have multiple around the edge or along the length of a larger part so that you can put multiple fingers through it and really get a good grip on it. You could fill them in and just have indents so that again, it's more of like the handle of a drawer than anything else. But that does limit your motion because you only have control of whatever you're putting the handle on from this direction. But the ring again is exceptionally strong. But again, also much like the earlier ladle handle, it has to be printed upside down. You can get around this by hybridizing the ring and the chamfer and instead making a ring fin to where you would allow the chamfer to go down below like this so that the ring is fully supported and oriented correctly. But then you have full grip of it all without having a weak spot. And again, this ring is exceptionally strong and you have a handle that you can now hang whatever your product is if you wanna go that direction, which it gets you back to kind of the traditional mug handle while still having a slightly different aesthetic. There's a few different variations of the ring. You can slightly tilt it, but it is a nice handle if it works for the application that you have. Again, small measuring cups or things that have to be hung are good options for this type of handle. But we haven't really gotten back to the feel of the mug. The mug is quite comfortable being held right here and it's what consumers are used to. And when creating a new product, regardless of what the process is, you do not wanna make the consumers feel like it's different. So we're used to having a finger through the hoop and the thumb pushing on it to hold your coffee steady or whatever it is you happen to be working with. That's a user experience that everyone is used to. But there is an option for this. Again, it's odd, but it's strong and reliable. And it follows that same premise of keeping the layers in the same row. And it's this type of handle, which is a slow kind of curved fin because now I can grab it exactly as I would a regular handle and you can change the ergonomics of this to however you want the aesthetic of your part to be. But now I have the same type of interaction as I do with a standard ring and potentially even better because now you can actually like kink your fingers inside of the slot or you can change the curvature of that so that it molds to the shape of the fingers. It's not this loop that you hook onto, but an actual ergonomic handle. And again, this is super reliable, more flexible. And since every part of the handle is in plane, it's very strong and reliable. And you are able to re-engineer this so that it could be hung. You could slightly change the a geometry of it so that it could hang from shelves. But instead of having the manufacturing difficulties and the stone age methodologies coming into space age technology of 3D printing, you're able to create an entirely new aesthetic that uses the process to its maximum potential and create something that is truly unique, truly beautiful, and truly differentiating while also not compromising on any part of the experience of the product. You are back to what the original was, but now you are fully optimized to mass produce this with the technologies that are available today. In this case, mass production 3D printing. So it's very important to always keep the end process in mind. You don't wanna to try to put a square peg into a round hole. You wanna design for the process that you wanna produce it with. Mass production 3D printing can save you the cost of molds. It can save you the cost of warehousing, the cost 
cost of risk of having to produce large quantities of parts and then deliver them to customers. So it has a huge number of benefits, but it does require you to rethink what your product is because you have to use the process for what it provides. It is different. It has different advantages that you can now take advantage of that give you distance from your competitors and allow you to create something truly unique and beautiful. Have a great day, everybody.